Mike, can you do me a favor? Mike, can you do me a favor? Can you stand up there and just start talking for like five seconds? In the mic or not? Huh? In the mic? Uh, not in the mic, just in general. If I can hear you with that, I know I can hear you with the mic. Okay. After headache, after headache, after headache, yeah. You got it. Um, there's no Wi-Fi anywhere in this building, so I hacked my phone this morning, and I'm tethering my phone, which I don't have a tethering account, but doing it anyways, to the laptop, and then I'm using Google Plus to stream the sermon live on YouTube as well as on my Google Plus page, and then there'll be a copy of it once all that streaming happens. Problem is, I've only been able to get a hold of one person that's actually in my kitchen. But that's on Christmas. Uh, what did they do? Whatever. Huh? I don't know, because I'm not thinking about the spread. Whatever, though. I'm going to be crashing on your side. How are you feeling? Are you ready for it to be over and just disappear? Yeah? So go and dip. 
It's a very backward wedding. Yeah. So I just sent you the link to my YouTube page, and there's a live stream of it going on right now. So that should work. Um, they're running a few minutes late, so you got a little bit of time. So that's yeah. It's fine. All right, man. For all what you're watching there, I gotta go back to this. Yep, quite. Chris. Chris. I got both of them. I got her brother and her friend, so. Hey! <laughs> Oh, that gets me that close. Yeah. I'm glad you guys could make it. <laughs> hey.
separates us from God. It uh, rejects a relationship with God who very much wants a relationship with us. That is the foundational problem. The foundational solution is found in the John verse 316, which states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, and have eternal life. So, God didn't tell us how to do it all right. We came to him, come to him, he just said, I'm sending Jesus to save you. He'll take your sins on you. You just got to admit that I know a little more, a bit more about life than you do. And you say, I know my sins, Jesus came into my life. Bang. It's that simple. So, Chris and Crystal, you know God. You have made that decision. Now, you are entering a relationship where you, will, where you will have myriad opportunities to know him better. In fact, it will require it. What a wonderful adventure it is. Through marriage, I would counsel you to remember what your foundation is. Remember that foundation and act boldly on it with your relationship with each other, with your money, Career, your household, all those things. Remember your foundation. Act boldly. On an interpersonal level, you will need to learn to apologize boldly. Don't hold back. Repent boldly. Humble yourself boldly. Change boldly. Remember that your foundation is not popular culture. Uh, the Bible is always countercultural. It's always radically countercultural because culture represents man thinks God has different ways than us. His thoughts are higher than ours. So, and you don't recognize the truth about culture by being in culture. It's like the story you've heard about people who work in banks, they, they work around real money all the time, and then they recognize the counterfeit. So you spend time with the truth. That's how you recognize. And protect your marriage from it. We'll close with some specific advice from God's word about how to love each other in a marriage. Um, the Bible says basically that we are supposed to love each other as Christ loved the church. So, the question right is how exactly did Christ love the church? I'm going to suggest there are four ways to do that. Number one, Christ loved the church. Incarnationally. The root here is carne, meat, like chili con carne. So, <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? What it means is that Christ came in the flesh. He got God, came down to earth as a man to be with us, get down and dirty with us, and experience what life was like for us, walk a mile in our shoes. So, how do you do that in a, in a marriage? Well, you Learn to walk a mile in your spouse's shoes. Learn what they're all about. Uh, listening. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> Rule of thumb, if you don't know how, you don't know what you're, how to break your spouse, you probably need to do a little check and listen a little more. So, Christ loved the church besides uh, incarnationally, he loved sacrificially. You know, laid down his life for us, went to the cross. And uh, more than that, he was uh, given the opportunity to have money, power, security, all those things that we sometimes go after. He put them aside and said, put them on the altar. Uh, I won't take those. I don't want them. I love you more. So basically, sacrificially, to love your spouse that way, you just keep priorities straight. And you, Get in tune with God and you know if there's things that in your life, even if they're okay when you're single, you need to let them go. And God will tell you what those are. You know, you don't have to give away everything you have right away, right? I mean, you just need to know that He might ask you to give up those things for the relationship. And, if you do, and He'll make it easy. Just feel good about it. Christ also loved the church transformationally. In other words, look at Peter before he met Christ and afterwards. So, totally changed man. Well, um, the lesson for the uh, relationship is that is, the thing to understand about it is that Christ has given you 
be a position and ability to do that with your love. You love each other that way, and your spouse, you can help your spouse become the, exactly the person that God wanted them to be. And finally, Christ loved the church intercessionally. Book of Romans teaches that Christ, when he, after his resurrection, went to to God and he prays for us and intercedes for us constantly. The lesson there is simply that we need to intercede, intercede for our spouse. Chris was going through a hard time. Intercede for her. I'm going to use the prayer. I'm going to do this for Chris. Um, and I would say that all these things, um, if you see them as duty than they are, and God will bless your socks off if you do those things, but if you see them just as duties, that was great for my mind, that kind of thing. You know, you're, you're missing the point, really, because they are opportunities, and you're the only one who knows. I mean, you're the only one there for that person, right? So, um, and he, God asks you to join him in his work of loving your spouse that way. And so, if you do that, boy, the rewards, great joy, peace in the midst of struggles, and walk a room all that'll do. Chris and Crystal are now going to take communion together. Communion, another word for that is Eucharist, uh, from the Greek and Latin Eucharisto, which means Thanksgiving. Thankful that God sent his son to die for us and reconcile us to God through the taking away of our sins. Um, and the bread, the bread symbolizes Christ's body, the, the, the wine, his blood. So, so Chris and Chris, we're going to take that together and uh, it would be entirely appropriate for you to finally pray for them. really, really, really good. Chris and Crystal are going to make some solemn and beautiful promises to each other before God and you hear from these witnesses. I, Christopher, in commitment to the Lord, with you, Crystal, as my wife, I have 
happens to hold for the rest of forever. So walk together with the Lord for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health. I will understand you and I will live with you completely. I will be your friend and your team. Treating you with kind respect, I will submit to you out of reverence for Christ. I will be a safe place for you. I will care for you for loving you well. I will forsake, forsake all others in passionate commitment to you. I will not be harsh with you. I will love you by giving myself to, up for you. I will love you by nourishing you as I would nourish myself. I will love you by cherishing you, and I will keep you warm. <laughs> I will provide for you, and I will pursue you with everything the Lord has given me. According to the Lord's holy law, I will death to his heart, and I will not pursue death. In the presence of the Lord, I make this vow. Hi, <laughs> Crystal. In commitment to the Lord, take you, Christopher, as my husband. To have and to hold for the rest of forever. <laughs> to walk together with the Lord. For better or for worse. For richer for poor. In sickness and in health. I will submit to you in purity and in reverence. With honor and respect. I will submit to you out of reverence for Christ. I will submit to you as my dear. Giving over to you my fears. My desires and my trust. I will do what is right and not give what you fear. I will grow more beautiful by a gentle and quiet spirit. I will be a safe place for you. I will forsake all others in passionate commitment to you. According to the Lord's holy law, till death do his part, and I will not pursue death. <laughs> In the presence of the Lord, I make this vow. Wow. Did you hear what you just said? Wow. That's amazing. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's really helping me at times when you guys remember what I said. That would be. We are now going to seal these vows with the rings. Can we have the rings? Yes. <laughs> these rings are a reminder, a symbol to you and to everyone else that you now belong to each other. You're no longer just individual people. You are a unit, as the Bible says, one flesh. I curse perfectly this way. Having made these solemn and beautiful vows before God and these witnesses, Christopher Jerome McKee and Crystal Rose Bradford, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Chris, for the first of many, many times, Chris, <laughs> your bride. First time, Mr. and Mrs. Chris and Crystal Matee. <laughs>
Alright guys, well, I'll fire up uh, another video as soon as we're done with pictures, because I'm going to be on that, so, um, yeah.